Welcome to Ground Control. We have completed our tutorials on all the modifications that I did to the airframe in order to convert this glider over to an RC powered glider. And I've got some notes here I want to go over. This will be the last video in this uh, conversion series. The uh, you know Once you go through all the tutorials and get your airframe set up, all that's left is installing the, the, the uh, servos, the motor, and we've already gone through how all those are to be accomplished or how I accomplished them. So that's going to be pretty trivial to complete. But this is the uh, this is the completed completed uh, glider. Uh, there were some plan updates when I found out um, when I did my maiden flights that the CG, as I added weight to the plane, the CG had moved forward. I ended up having to put 13.5 grams of nose weight in this glider to get it to balance um, neutral on the CG which is what I what I like is a neutral balance on the CG. Uh, my battery um, I put my battery all the way forward the two cell 400 milliamp 25C LiPo that I have is going to be the lightest battery that I use for this so uh, when I when I determined how much nose weight I needed for this glider it was according to the forward position of that lipo. I have some 450 milliamp lipos on order. They have not yet arrived yet. So I think they'll probably be a couple grams heavier than the 400 milliamp battery. So I'll probably have to move it back just a little bit uh, to get the CG neutral. Um, let me see. Servo installation. Oh, first, uh, plan updates. Because because I realized I was going to have to put so much nose weight in this after getting it assembled and getting it ready for the maiden flight, I made some updates to the plans and I put notifications in the tutorials. Whenever I was talking about measurements, I would throw up a notification that told you that there were modifications in the plans. So one of the things that I modified in the plans is the electronics bay. The electronics bay was adequate for, for the electronics that I wanted to put in there, which was the micro receiver, the micro speed controller, and the switching voltage regulator, but it was a pretty tight fit. It was a tighter fit than I thought it was going to be. So what I did in the plans was I went from, I think it was 60 millimeters to 80 millimeters. I extended it forward by 20 millimeters, and you will see that in the plans. So that will allow you a little more room for your electronic components and it will also move that weight forward a little bit since I had to put so much nose weight in this thing. Also on the um, elevator assembly on the tail where the servo is located, I also moved that 20 millimeters forward of its current position. Your control linkage will be a little bit longer but it will also take less weight off of that tail. So my guess is uh, if I had to build this again with the modifications that I made to the plans, I would probably be down to about 9 or 10 grams of nose weight that I would need to add instead of 13.5. So, also this thing is uh, uh, very capable of carrying a micro FPV system. We also did a, a review of this uh, Turbo Wing micro FPV camera. I will have a couple of videos that I'll be posting soon that's a complete FPV flight. I finally had it once I got the mechanical trim all set up on this plane. I put the goggles on and took it for two FPV flights and those will show you just how acrobatic this uh, glider is. But uh, let's see, the nose weight, the CG. The CG uh, on this, on this uh, glider for a neutral balance on the CG is 42 millimeters back from the leading edge of the wing where it meets the fuselage. That's where my CG is located. It's just in front of where that wing spar is. So that's where I set the balance on the plane and if you watch it fly, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's definitely a good position for the CG with a neutral balance. Okay, so I provided templates. There's plans, there's decals, there's, temp there's templates. There's templates for the servo cutouts on the main wing for the wing spar, for the elevator uh, control surfaces, for the elevator clip that, that uh, ties the two control surfaces together, uh, the motor mount, and there's also templates in there for the uh, micro control horns that I used. And those are just made out of gift card material. 
but um, the templates are in the plans that will allow you to cut those out of the cards and use them in the wing. They work great, work fine. I also uh, put uh, the fuselage skids on this to keep the uh, keep the bottom of the fuselage up off the ground, and those have worked out great. Those are actually just made out of the, the hoops from uh, a dental flosser. So I took two dental flossers and cut the hoops off of them. I grabbed some of my wife's fingernail polish, don't tell her, uh, red fingernail, fingernail polish and, and uh, colored them up. I made a, a five millimeter deep slot, uh, two slots for each one of these hoops in the bottom of the fuselage and then just glued those in, pushing, pushing in about five millimeters of material uh, for both of those. The household material that I use for this, a lot of household material, like I said, I used uh, gift card stuff, uh, material for the micro control horns. I used a jumbo straw as a wire protector and housing for the wires for our motor and our elevator um, servo. Uh, I used a uh, bamboo skewer for the main wing spar. Um, you could also use a bamboo skewer for the tail spar too. One thing that you're going to make, want to make sure before you, before you take on this project is you want to make sure that everything is straight, especially the tail section. Now I had to put in a carbon um, slat in my tail to get it straightened up, but you could use a barbecue skewer to do the same thing. Just make sure that all your your wing, your your tail assembly, and also your fuselage is completely straight before you begin this this build otherwise it's not going to fly right so that was some of the household materials I used and I just used a foam tack glue you could use hot glue I used a little bit of hot glue in different places uh, made my decals just out of uh, transparent packing label material used tape um, so there was a lot of household material that was repurposed for this build Servo installation, the main wing servo installation, the best thing to do is, you know, we've got our holes cut out that come up, come down into the um, electronics bay. So uh, what I did was I just fed my wires through, my servo wires through, just taped them, just secured them with tape so that they didn't pull back through. Just let your servos dangle off of the fuselage until you get your main wing set in. And then after you get your main wing set in, then glue in your servos. That's the easiest way to do it, okay? Make sure that you get your servos in with your control arms. Make sure it's set to neutral before you install them. Get your um, control rods attached to it and then uh, install your control horn so you can make sure that you're coming straight back from the control arm. That'll make it more efficient. Okay, so we talked about that control horn flap. Since I have two independent servos on my wings, and so I don't have anything that's pushing from the fuselage to the wing. This, the main wing is just a friction fit. You can, you can move it, you can move it around. And uh, so I didn't see any need to glue it permanently in place. Plus with you know what, the way I land, um, it, it, the w main wing will give a little bit. You know, I've had to straighten it up. I've had to straighten it back up two or three times, but it flies great. There's enough, it's tight enough friction fit that you won't have to glue it. I do suggest that you put couple of beads of glue on the outside of the uh, horizontal stabilizer where it meets the fuselage on both sides because your your servo here is going to be pushing uh, pushing and pulling against that assembly so I would just tack it tack it in place but just tack it that way if you ever need to pull it back out again you can um, the flight time that I can get on this is my 400 milliamp battery is uh, somewhere between six to eight minutes, depending on how much you're in the throttle. So uh, getting six to eight minutes of flight time on a 400 milliamp two cell, is fantastic, especially, you know, since I've been in the throttle quite a bit. The thrust to weight ratio with the power system that I have on here is 1.45 to one. It's pretty respectable for a glider and, and it's extremely acrobatic. It has plenty of thrust. And uh, the next version that we're going to be working on is going to be a tractor version. But I want to do the pusher version first. So when I get the tractor version uh, completed, I will provide tutorials on the things that are different. Okay, uh, I won't go over everything again, but anything that I had to do that was different than the pusher configuration, um, I'll put that online. So 
go out and build one of these. It's, it, you know, the components, the electronic components were very inexpensive. They can carry a micro FPV system. I don't think you will find a factory plane like this for the price that I have in it that's going to be able to fly like this um, for this little money and you'll get a lot more satisfaction creating it yourself. So go ahead and get one of those chuck gliders and convert it. You'll be glad you did. Thanks for watching the video series, the tutorial. Um, we'll be posting more videos of this soon. <coughs> Please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out our Patreon site. We have a lot of free content there as well. And that's where the plans, the decals, and all the documentation for this build is located. So go to the Patreon site to download that stuff. And I will see you in the air.